Okay, here we're going to uh, take a look around. We have our new Siemens controller and we're going to take a look at, right now we're operating a variable frequency drive. And the Siemens, the controller down here is right here. It's a 1200 controller and it can do lots of things. We're just getting started with it and we're only scratching the surface. We've got a variable frequency drive over here and that's an Allen Bradley uh, power flux and we've got a motor over here it's a standard little test motor that we use in the lab it's a three phase third of a horsepower I guess and over here we've got the HMI which is going to control things for us and over here is we've got the Siemens um, platform which is called a TIA portal and what that means it's totally integrated automation and what you do is you can just uh, browse for your files We've got something down here called VFD so um, just to open that project and it's a little hard getting used to it but uh, once you get used to it this uh, seems to be fairly uh, sophisticated and you know easy to use um, a lot more sophisticated than those Allen Bradley stuff that we use normally. And if you open up the project view, and what we've got is we've got a pretty simple uh, project, and what we're going to take a look at is just the blocks for this. And take a look at what we've got here in a second. This just uh, shows part of the ladder logic. We have a simple latch in circuit to get it running. Um, we've got direction. And then we've got some things. We've got an analog card in here. So we can take our input um, for speed control and convert it to an output frequency that we use. Um, we have some buttons that we can just uh, add in, um, like adjust the frequency up and down in slight increments. And then we've also got uh, a really neat feature is this. Uh, well, it's uh, going to a web page, but actually it's uh, a remote monitor. And what we've got set up right now is a remote uh, monitor, so it's a, it's a mimic of what the system panel is. And so if we slide over here, what we can do is we can look at our HMI. And our HMI has the controls for our system. If we want to start our system, well, first we have to put it into enable and now we're enabled to go we can flip the direction whatever we want um, clockwise counterclockwise and then we start it and we pan over here we can see our motor running um, now it's just running fast so what we have is we have a speed control setting and we can here it's running at its nominal 60 hertz um, but we can set that to whatever we want and here we'll go down to uh, let's say 10 hertz and we've got to hit the enter button over here and if we can pan over here you can see that it's running really slow and we also have these knobs over here so we can increase the frequency and decrease the frequency if we want so if we go over here we'll still be looking at the motor and we're going to be increasing the frequency a little bit. And you can watch it spin faster and faster and faster. And right now we're at about 20 hertz. That's about 30 hertz. And, you know, we can just put it on 60 hertz. We can do it in one lump step. And then you can see it's going full speed. Now, the neat thing with this too is we can reverse direction and so the uh, frequency controller makes a controlled ramp down stop and then goes back up to speed so there we flip directions it slows down reverses direction and we're back up to speed and if we pan back over to the HMI now you can see that the uh, direction indicators are on Okay, so here's the last half of our puzzle where we're going to talk about the remote display, and I think this is really cool. So all you have to do is get into your browser, any type of browser, and we're going to browse to the PLC's um, IP address.
and that'll get you into the somatic um, 1200 now here you can enter it and we do have a uh, name and password set up which you don't have to have that but um, you can log into it and then here's what I think is really good um, it'll tell you what the status is um, but you can also go in and you can look at uh, some of the things like a watch table and you know you can take a look at real-time information on what your bits are set um, you can also look at some of the diagnostic buffers for what you have in diagnostics so you can remotely take care of um, well that one doesn't show too much but you can take a look at what the uh, is happening with your module remotely and down here so I like the watch tables you can take a look at it in real time sort of and we'll explain that in a second but then we have a user defined web page and we just call it our ACC uh, controller and this is what it looks like right now we're all off so everything is off and uh, we're at zero frequency and now I'll go over to the HMI and do some controls and here we're just putting in the direction bit and when it comes back and it blinks when it comes back um, we have it set up so that uh, direction and enable are amber colors and the drive is your usual on off so we'll put it in the enable and again the enable is a two step so we put in enable first and now we can turn the drive on and so let's start the drive now the drive has started but we haven't put in our frequency yet so when it blinks we have it all ready to go and now we'll go to our speed control menu and put in a frequency and start off with 50 Hertz and now we're running and hopefully when we come back and you can see it's 50 Hertz right there we might want to make it a little bigger at some point um, and we can also adjust it on the uh, HMI and here we're going down in frequency and right now it's about you know, a little over 45 and when it comes back it says 45.4 and so we have control through our HMI one of the things that we want to do is we want to put right now we just show the mimic up here um, but we are going to put some controls for start stop and direction bit so we can control it from here now there's two things you can see that it updates right now about every I guess five seconds and we can make that faster except when it updates it does this blinking thing now I have read and we could make it faster but then uh, to make it faster the blinking becomes extremely annoying um, but there are ways to uh, take care of that and so in the next installment hopefully we'll have controls down here where we can do the actual control from the remote panel but also we'll take care of the uh, blinking thing which in looking at it, it has to, uh, you have to resort to uh, some higher level um, JavaScript that at this present time I'm not sure how to do. And right now we're at about 58 RPM, or er, Hertz, and when it comes back we're at 58.1. And so that's uh, the way it works. Now if we look really quickly at the code, that's behind it. It's just a regular, uh, you know, web page. And that's all this is, is a web page. You know, I slapped it together with Dreamweaver. Um, but the one thing that I like is how you control whether the light shows on or off is we have this image and it's encoded lamp zero. And then the last part of this, it's really um, two bits worth of information, but the last bit will be encoded with this enable signal. We're looking at the enable bit here. And so what happens, and they're all the same, um, the zero is just our amber bit and the lamp one is the red-green bit. So if you look at that, you know, when it's in the off condition, it encodes the enable bit as a zero, so it becomes lamp zero zero, and when, you know, the uh, enable bit is activated, it becomes lamp one. And then you just have two different uh, icons that you use you store them in your images. I created these with Illustrator. Works out pretty good. Um, so anyway, uh, this 
I think is a really good function that you can have this remote control. And again, um, you know, you can, here if we look at the watch tables now, we can see how a lot more of these have turned up true. We actually get our speed bit here. So you can take a look and, you know, in industry this is going to be an important function for, uh, you know, remote monitoring of uh, the way your equipment is operating. So for right now, um, let's, we're going to leave it at that and hopefully uh, next time around we'll have a new module that has a little bit of control and we'll also get rid of some of this annoying blinking stuff like that.